Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to the Deflating and Escaping Atheism uh, Project. This is the latest installment we'll be doing, responding to atheist videos. Joining me as usual is Rob from Deflating Atheism. Say hi, Rob. Howdy, howdy. Uh, please remember, everybody, to give us a like, give us a subscribe. We could also use your financial support. Um, uh, on escapingatheism.com, see our, our funding vehicles there, see Rob's channel, Deflating Atheism. Please give us a like and subscribe, and please tell your friends and enemies. Okay, today we picked out a video by a guy we've looked at before, the somewhat popular Heath. H-I-I-T-H is how he's spelled. Can, can I just say uh, this was actually recommended to us by uh, by user Mr. Spark, who's who's recommended a few things. So go check out his channel because he has some good stuff there. Yeah, Mr. Spark has a lot of interesting videos. He really does. And just as a matter of historical record, we have addressed Heath before. I brought this up and I put a link in the low bar. I'm showing this on the screen now. This was one of Heath's first videos. We had we had we had taken it apart, but it, it was one of his earliest videos. You'll notice he had longer hair then. And in this video, in this original video he made, he made a bunch of false claims about Christianity straight up. He, he really did, while claiming to be an expert in Christianity because he was supposedly raised in it. All he did was show that he was not in any sort of well-educated, thoughtful Christian home or thoughtful, well-educated Christian education background. He literally knows nothing about it. And, and it just simply makes things up about the Christian religion that most Christians don't believe. He's continued with this now. Today we're going to be looking at this video. Oh, oh where... now he's, he's lying about what we can see and hear for ourselves. We'll see the Frank Turek video, and we'll see that he's just basically lying about the whole thing. He is. I'm afraid that he is. Although I will start by saying, uh, the, the, saying something that is very much in his favor. And Frank Turek might not like my saying it. Some of his fans might not like say it. I have an edgy relationship with guys like, uh, on how I see guys like Frank Turek, too, uh, and the way a lot of Christians, especially in the evangelical, you know, I'm the preacher and I'm the self-declared expert, and so I'll tell you how it is style of Christianity. Um, you know, Rob and I are from a tradition that's more about, you know, 2,000 years of continuing theory and, and, and practice. But in any case, uh, and so what I see is that Turek and I think this is a fair cop, Turek always makes the classical arguments for God and the current scientific arguments for God, which are abundant, it turns out. Um, but then he makes the leap to Jesus and the Bible. And, and that, I mean, I don't know, think he always does that, but he does it enough, and I see it enough from Christians who approach uh, the, the, the topic this way. It should be admitted openly that most of the evidence that Frank gives most of the time would also be considered equally valid uh, evidence for uh, the Jewish idea of God, independent of... Any um, monotheist faith. Yeah. Right. It would also be proof for the Zoroastrian faith. It could be used for proof for the Islamic faith. It could be used for to prove certain beliefs within Hinduism and other traditions. Uh, that's that's the problem, and when when I, th I think when Christian apologists do that, they wittingly or unwittingly there are leaving a big hole for atheists to drive through because it is true most of, much of the evidence that people like Turek give are not exclusively useful to Christians. But okay. on balance, on balance, I think he's doing a, a, a great service, and I think like if. Oh. if even if it's just evangelical churches get him over to do his presentation, just seeing a presentation uh, for maybe 14 or 15 year olds watching a presentation of Frank Turek would be sufficient to inoculate themselves against like 95% of atheist stupidity, in my opinion. You know what? You are correct about that. You really are. Um, because atheists like Heath, like all the other big atheist names, either on YouTube or elsewhere, uh, they make all sorts of ludicrous claims they can never back up. I, we almost did a video tonight on Godless Cranium's recent one, claiming that Christians have a burden of proof to him. No, we don't. No, we don't. We don't. We don't. We don't. We don't. And, but at the same time, I would agree with you. Frank Turek will knock the crap out of most atheist arguments. Yes. And atheists can't do anything about it except straw man him. Nevertheless, I'm giving him the freebie. 
It doesn't even rise to the level of straw manning. It's just, it's just flat out lying. Right. Well, and it's he starts the video with a lie. He 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 titles the video "Sorry Christians, but science uh, science works." Or I actually I don't have the title here. Science isn't useless, which is not a not a claim that Frank Turek ever made. Yes. Right. The the, the Frank Turek never claimed science was useless. He, so you started out with a straw man and a lie, and you kept going from there. In any case, let's go ahead and look at Heath uh, Heath's video, and of course we'll be seeing a little bit of, of Frank Turek here too. So here we go. Ready? This one is from Frank Turek. He starts off, as he usually does, with an anecdote about how some guy's daughter went to college and became an atheist because, I quote, she ran into atheistic professors on college campus. He then says that she was never given any apologetics training and says this. Is there anything I can do now? I said, well, you could ask her a question. In fact, this is the question I ask all unbelievers. The question goes like this. If Christianity were true, would you become a Christian? I mean, if she hesitates at all, the problem isn't just here. The problem's here. She might not want it to be true because when you go to college, you don't necessarily want God to exist. You want to do your own thing. You don't want the moral constraints of God on you. It's not like that's the only reason someone would hesitate to what's probably an unexpected question. Look, if I was asked that question, then I would hesitate as well because I don't really know what you're asking. Are you asking that Christianity is true and everything else is still the same? We still have the same amount of indication that it is true? Because then no, I would not be a Christian. I wouldn't believe in God because I don't see any indication that he exists. Whoa, that was weirdly incoherent, wasn't yes. it? Very strange. Well, I I'm coming from the position that it is good to believe what is true. Now, right. I, he, I, he's, he's, I guess he's assuming, like a atheists tend to do, that there's no, no reason for believing that, that Christianity is true or that God exists. Of course, naturally, we don't believe that, but... Uh, why why would you even be concerned about the validity of your beliefs if it weren't at least for this value that uh believing what is true is good so yeah i know kicking the legs out from under yourself if you don't think that that believing what is true is is a good thing in and of itself yeah and notice something arbitrary he said right at the end before i paused him there that he sees no indication that there's a god well, we see indication that there's a God. We see lots of indications that there's a God. So the question is, you know, why do you get to pose as if you're the rational person and the rest of us haven't drawn any sort of logical, rational, evidence-based conclusion? Well, what's your basis for that? You found the evidence unconvincing, therefore it's not true? You That's, found the evidence yeah. unconvincing, therefore no one rational would find it convincing? Is that what you mean? Uh, get coherent, Heath. I don't think you understand the basics here. You're not the arbiter of truth. You don't own science. You don't represent science. And you don't... Yeah. Shall we, shall we go yeah, on? You continue. Okay. But if you're saying that Christianity is true and there is indication that it is true, then yes, I would believe, I don't know if I'd be a Christian, but that's a topic for another video, I suppose. Okay, so if I got him correctly, even if Christianity were true and it were proven to him, he still might not be a Christian. All right. Well, he, he does, I think there is a valid point there, and we don't have to delve, it, but there, there, is, there is kind of the intellectual assent to the premises of Christianity, and then there is the kind of, investment of self into christianity those are two different things so oh yeah no that's that's true and i guess it, 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 i will also grant that it's a big question i mean who's christianity i'm much more a favor of, of what i of what is generally known as orthodox christianity than i am evangelical or fundamentalist christianity they are different so i mean to, to give Keith, Heath credit he Heath here credit he even if he decided christianity was true you would have to decide which version of Christianity had the most truth in it, and there is an intellectual climb there. So yeah, point there. Yeah. But they, I mean, I mean, it goes back to the point that's been made many times: is that is that being a Christian is not like believing in the Aristotelian God. I mean, it's not just something that you apprehend intellectually. There, there, there's sort of a more of a personal investment involved 
than simply you know agreeing to these certain claims. Yes, and and before we move on, I like the fact that you mentioned the Aristotelian idea of God. Let me let me tell people what that means. He's referring to the philosopher Aristotle, who was like three four hundred years before Christ. Not a Christian, not a Jew, not particularly religious. He, along with many others in his circle, reasoned out there had to be a God. Uh, they had open questions about what God would be like, whether or not he communicated with us, even if he was intelligent, was up for, for debate. But Aristotle, like Socrates, like Plato, like all the great, most of the great Stoic thinkers, actually, reason there simply had to be a God. The question is, what sort of relationship would we have with that God? Yes, and they were not talking about Zeus. They were not talking about Zeus. Well, actually, I even going to correct you a little bit there. Surprisingly, I have found out from Professor Kanainen, who's uh, part, sometimes on our team, you know, a, a part of our team, um, and Andrew Stateltes and a few others. Apparently, the word Zeus, Z-E-U-S, and the word Deus, which is God, D-E-U-S, are functionally the same. And in Stoic philosophy, in Stoic theology, the Stoic religion, uh, they viewed most of the tales of Zeus as allegorical, not literal truths, and that Zeus was the timeless prime mover beyond space, beyond time, controlling everything. And uh, nice. Zeus really was to the advanced Stoic religion. So even there, those Greeks who worship Zeus thought Zeus was the ultimate source of everything, which does get back to my point that a lot of Turek's arguments could be used as proofs for other religions. But, but th that doesn't change the fact that Turek is bulletproof in demonstrating it is not rational to think there's not a god, and it is not rational to, it is perfectly rational and evidence-based to think there is one. So, in any case, why don't we move on? Yes. Difficult. In fact, 75% of young people walk away from the church once they go to college. Some never return. Now, there's a number of reasons for this, but one of the reasons is they don't know why Christianity is true. And then they run into atheistic college professors who say things like this. You know, when I was a Christian, I was taught why Christians believe that Christianity is true. Now, I didn't go to college, but I did become an atheist. And that's because I started thinking for myself, or more accurately, because I started thinking from an unbiased perspective. Ha! <laughs> Heath, listen, kid, you've, you, you obviously don't know much about Christianity. You've proven that on multiple occasions. At best, as a very young man, you were introduced to a very primitive version of Christianity that couldn't defend itself to you, and but then you went on to make up a bunch of things about Christianity that aren't true. I remember, for example, in your so-called deconversion video, you claim prayer didn't work. By the way, there's abundant scientific evidence that prayer works. That's a pretty big burden of proof you got there. But then you showed how primitive you were by saying you prayed that a piece of paper would was it either that a piece of paper would appear or disappear off of his bed? I think he wanted it to disappear, and he didn't, so he concluded that God doesn't. Uh, answer answer prayers or that prayer doesn't work because God didn't make a piece of paper disappear from his bed Which means you're a primitive who thinks God is a wish fairy. Yes. I mean, yeah. I mean really uh, you and, and your claim that you You have you have you have no objectivity at all in your position here. You, you really don't uh, And your claim that you just thought for yourself well, I thought for myself for the longest time, and I concluded that there had to be a God. And after concluding that there had to be a God, I began evaluating the other religions, and I made my choice rationally. You seem to have concluded what? That because someone said science has proven there's no need for God, there isn't one? I don't get it. He seems incoherent to me. At, at the risk of repeating myself, I mean, this is something I've said verbatim before, but I've always said that atheism, or at least uh, in the new atheist uh, incarnation of it, is essentially an adolescent uh, belief system. Because like, like all adolescents, they think the limits of their knowledge are the limits of everyone's knowledge, and the limits of their experience are the limits of everyone's experience. So if, if a person is raised, by the way, I'm getting a little bleed through of the video. Uh, if a person is raised a certain way, and then they think for themselves, and then they become an atheist, they project that narrative onto anyone that to think for yourself is to become an atheist. No, in fact, a lot of people have thought for themselves and have become Christians, have abandoned atheism. 
and uh, Heath here just seems like the typical. Uh, I went I went to Sunday school when I was twelve. Therefore, I know everything there is to know about Christianity, and we and we see that a whole lot. Yeah, a ton of it. I actually had one one guy claim he had twelve years of theological training. I'm like, do you mean you went to Catholic school? <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what he meant. Wow. That's 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 so bloody disingenuous. I mean, I do have, I do really, because I was an atheist till my 40s, okay? Um, but the, uh, so I have sympathy for the confused person. I really do. I, I, a lot of schools, including Catholic schools, to my chagrin, have fallen down the last generation or two talking about all the rational evidence for God. And to be blunt, most fundamentalist Christians don't discuss it at all. They just they just go to the Bible, and the Bible proves it to them, and that's satisfactory to them. That was never satisfactory to me, and and still wouldn't be at this point because I think there's more to that to it all than just read the Bible. Yeah. Um, uh, and so I'm sympathetic with guys like Heath who don't like the simplistic Christians um, with that simplistic well, the Bible, and therefore. Um, although they have a, those Christians have a right to that point of view. I am sympathetic to that. Okay, so should we keep going? Yeah. All right, here we go. I stopped just looking at Christian arguments and looked at all of the arguments for and against the existence of a God. And the arguments for were really underwhelming. And that's why I make these videos, because religious arguments really seem to be flawed and atheistic arguments tend to make a lot more sense. A lot of weasel words there, Heath, because you can only speak for yourself. As, well, as, uh, I like how he says uh, atheist arguments seem uh, very strong to him. I, I, if we ask him, okay, please give us uh, an argument as to why God doesn't exist, you know what he's going to say. You know what he's going to say. No, I have to prove anything. I'm an atheist. The burden of proof is on you. So I'd really like to hear what he thinks these uh, very convincing atheist arguments are. Yeah, I, I, I'm also going to be skeptical here and say, Heath, I don't believe you've looked at all the rational arguments. No. For God. No. I really don't believe you have. If you have, why don't you do us all a favor and, I don't know, master two or three of the classical arguments for God and demonstrate that you understand them before you explain why you don't agree with them. I bet you wouldn't do it. In fact, you don't do any of that here in this video. You don't take, take apart any of Turek's evidence at all. You just straw man him for the most part. Yeah, well, let's, let's get into this because it's going to take us forever to get through this video now. Okay. Now, it's not just science that apparently the atheists think points away from God into atheism. All of these other things, these are all atheists. They think that reason, science, evolution, morality, evil, they think all of these things point to atheism and away from Christianity. Are these really arguments for atheism? No, these arguments are not arguments for atheism because they are stolen from God himself. Ooh, so can I learn more about that in your book, Stealing from God? Look, I don't like watching videos from Frank here because, at least in the beginning, he always says the same couple things over and over again. So I tend to lose interest very quickly. And promoting his book is one of those things. Hey, so what? People are doing something wrong to promote a book. The man puts the effort to write an entire book. Do you bother reading the book or do you just kind of slime his character and act like he's doing something wrong to try to sell a book. And, and I'm sorry, are you doing anything to raise funds for what you do, advocating for your irrational, illogical, evidence-free, atheistic universe? Are you doing that? And, or, and do you attack, you know, others who sell their books on atheism, some of exactly. which you've read, right? Do you, I mean, really? Do you condemn any of the authors currently on the sh bookshelves uh, peddling the atheist nonsense that you, you sw swilled up and bought yourself? Do you accept money for what you do, sir? What, what, what kind of slimy ad hom is that? Yeah. I mean, really. You can find Frank Turek unconvincing. Hell, I just gave you, I've, I've mentioned it twice now, I've given you, given you the whole you can drive through Turek and say, well, you may have evidence that there's a God, but that doesn't make Christianity true. And, and, and you'd be right. However, you know, you say you've reviewed all these different religions. Uh, 
if you had, you'd have noticed what I'm saying is also true. You wouldn't have said none of it's rational. What you'd have said is, yeah, some of these arguments could be used to, to support other religions too, which is true. Uh, but you just claim there's no convincing evidence you've ever seen. Well, what evidence have you seen? Anyway, should we go on? Let's skip to some sort of point. Now, question. Does science show that Simpson was guilty? How many say yes? You know, the answer is no. Why? Not because I think Simpson was, was innocent, but because science doesn't say anything. Scientists do. All science gives you is the evidence. That's right. You have to gather the evidence and then interpret the evidence, and no evidence is self-interpreting. Or you could be like the average atheist today and make the ludicrous claim that there is no evidence. Sorry, let's go back to uh, uh, the video. All evidence, all data needs to be interpreted. A scientist has to do that. Science doesn't say, say a thing. Well, how do scientists interpret that data? Is it just willy-nilly and haphazard, as you seem to imply? Or do we look at it objectively and form seem testable hypotheses that we then go and repeatedly test and validate to form a reasonable consensus? Okay, a, a huge honking lie. Huge honking lie. Again, this is, this is going to be basically the theme for the entire uh, uh, little presentation here. He never said it was willy-nilly. He never said it wasn't based on evidence or, or, or an evaluation or on testing. Heath here is just lying. Yeah, I'm sorry, Heath. And, and, and you're making generalizations that show that you don't understand science. It's very clear you don't understand science. And furthermore, it's very clear that most of your fellow atheists do not understand science either. Now, some do. Let's be clear. There are atheist scientists, and they're a minority of scientists around the world as well as here and in, in, in the, in the English-speaking world. Atheist scientists are a minority everywhere among scientists. Uh, that said, uh, what, you're, you're totally not understanding science. What Frank Turek said was 100% correct, son. I mean, 100% correct. Science can only give you the evidence. You have to reach the logical conclusions. And by the way, I, think, I just heard you hear you use the word objective. Okay, last I checked, I have yet to meet an atheist who will claim that objective truth even exists. Mm -hmm. Are you suggesting objective truth does exist? And objective facts do exist? Okay. How do you measure that? Here's the real truth. We have evidence all over the place that scientists agree, as well as many others, is evidence that there's a God. We have it in neurobiology. We have it in the copious studies on near-death experience. We have it in cosmology. We have it in quantum physics. We have it in other areas as well. We also have evidence pointing to the existence of a soul and evidence pointing to the existence of an afterlife, all peer-reviewed testable, detestable stuff that even makes predictions. In other words, there is science directly pointing to the idea that there's a God in an afterlife. Once again, I will give you the, 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 the reality, which will annoy some Christians, that those things aren't proof of Christianity. They're just proof that it's rational to think Christianity might be true, because we got evidence for all those things Christians believe, God, an afterlife, a soul, and so on. You want to add anything? No, I'm just going to say, like, like, Frank Turek also does, uh, like, because, uh, like, biblical knowledge and that kind of stuff is, is admittedly a weak spot for me, but he has stupendous uh, presentations on YouTube where, where he goes through the New Testament and finds the little points of concordance. So go check up on those, please. But yeah, oh, that's, yeah. That's the point. Just to be clear, I am a Christian, and I, uh, but I came to that conclusion by looking at the evidence and drawing a rational conclusion for it. I really did. So what? And you figure, the, and I did it because I reject the, rejected the atheist worldview. I realized it was stupid and incoherent and evidence-free and actually ran against a lot of the evidence that we have. He thought right. for himself, yes. Thought for himself, but nobody who disagrees with you thought for himself? Yeah, okay. Anyway, let's keep going. So-called creation science. The fact of the matter is we can tell a lot about what is probably true using forensic science. Yes, there's people behind it, but it's the method that makes it reliable. And forensic science has been used 
to show that it is entirely reasonable that Jesus of Nazareth was crucified, died, put in a tomb, and got back out of that tomb having been resurrected. We have forensic science indicating that that happened. Hmm. That's a direct, now, now after just defending all the other religions, I just went straight to Christianity. We have substantial evidence that Jesus Christ uh, died and was resurrected exactly as the gospel accounts say they do. And since you mentioned that, uh, uh, that, that issue of forensics, I'm going to mention a book here that you might want to get, which I doubt you would bother to read or really address, but maybe you will. Cold Craze Christianity, a homicide detective investigates the claims of the Gospels by J. Warner Wallace. Now, I recently saw uh, Richard Carrier, that pseudo-scholar, try to claim, call J. Warner Wallace merely an ex-cop which is, you know, very weaselly. J. Warner Wallace is a former and quite successful homicide detective, massively trained in the science of forensics, who has helped put away many murderers using forensic science. And, and he started out investigating the central claims of Christianity as a homicide detective using forensics, and even though he was not a believer, eventually became one because the evidence was so overwhelming and he was pretty sure he could prove it to almost any jury. So again, what, what is your point? Because uh, I don't know what it is, Heath. Um, but you like forensics. Well, there's a reference to some forensics for you. And it's even specific to the Christian religion. Uh, there's evidence elsewhere too. Anything else you want to add there, Rob? Nope, let's go. Okay. Understandably, we're more apt to think the case was racially motivated. Same evidence, two different conclusions. Why the difference? The mindset, the worldview. It's based on an argument over worldviews or mindsets. If you're a, somebody who's open to God, you'll look at the evidence and go, yeah, this evidence points to God. If you're a materialist, though, if you're an atheist and you've ruled out any intelligence out there, if you think every cause is a material cause, in other words, all that exists are materials, doesn't matter how much the evidence appears to point to an intelligent being, you're going to say, no, nope, it had to be a natural cause. But what if one of those standpoints was based on evidence itself? What? Like just because we tend to have a bias does not mean that it is impossible to look at things in an unbiased way and to figure out what is objectively most likely to be true. Of course, bias is going to affect the way we interpret things. But what if we looked at things in an unbiased way? Excuse no. me, sir. <laughs> Go ahead. Go He's ahead. not suggesting not looking at things in, a, in an unbiased way. That's not something he ever said. He never said it wasn't possible to ever know anything about anything. You're just lying again. Yeah, I'm afraid so. And again, okay, so are you suggesting that you believe in objectivity, Heath? And if so, who gets to determine what is objectively true and what is not? You? Um, some we should live in a debate with TMM and they, they can argue about whether a mind-independent reality exists, yes. Yeah, no kidding. Um, you, are you the arbiter of truth, sir? Are you the one who gets to declare what is evidence and what isn't? Are you the one who gets to declare what is objective and what isn't? You know, you're making claims that are not scientific and that, that would cause most responsible scientists to quiver um, at best, and many would just laugh at you. I know, I've interviewed quite a few of them, many of them former atheists. Former atheists who thought for themselves and realized while they were doing science that a godless universe made no damn sense, like Sarah Salviander, Seigart, and, and quite a few others I've talked to. So, oh, good team. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say that's it. I mean, it, prove that you're the objective one, please. Uh, otherwise, what's your point? We all no. agree that, that, that you should use evidence and that you should be objective as you can. By the way, why are you unbiased? Because why? Because you drew a conclusion? Well, great. I drew a conclusion, too. And I was an atheist longer than you've been alive, I would imagine. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Should we keep well, going? No, I think you might have uh, skipped something there, because what Frank Turek was talking about, he was talking about the uh, O.J. Simpson trial. And, and well, yeah. a large proportion of, of African Americans uh, believed he was innocent, and, and a large proportion of, of white Americans thought he was guilty. And so, yeah, the evidence is, it was the same. But, yeah, they came to different conclusions, and I think 
being aware. <laughs> We're not saying that it's impossible to be unbiased, but being aware of bias and being able to correct for bias is the best guarantee of being able to look at things objectively in the first place. So we, that, Frank Turek is actually saying the opposite of what you want him to say. He's like, yes, we should be aware of bias. That's exactly correct. And Frank and Turek was correct. Science doesn't say a damn thing. That doesn't mean science is useless. It means science can't do anything but give us evidence by which we can draw our conclusions. Yes. And all over science, scientists look at the same data and come to different conclusions about things. Happens all the time in science. Happens all the time in a courtroom, too. Yes. The truth of the matter is, I don't know if O.J. Simpson was guilty or not. I have an opinion based on the data I have seen, including the scientific data I have seen. Other people look at the same scientific data and come to the opposite conclusion. That's because no one is unbiased, and science can't make you unbiased. It can just help you correct for your biases sometimes. By the way, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I may be way off here, but uh, it's it was my impression that the, uh, the defense in the O.J. Simpson trial didn't even try to dispute that it was his blood. They, they just had this counter narrative where, where the blood evidence was planted by a racist cop. So, yes. so it's not the science that's actually, it's just they have this whole sort of Bayesian reasoning where this guy was so racist that he would go through all this effort. And so therefore it's up to the jurors to decide, well, is this whole conspiracy theory plausible? So it, it doesn't even go up to something like DNA evidence. I mean, there's still interpretation beyond that. All you can hope for in science is a consensus view that people look at the evidence for a, a proposition and that most rational people who understand the evidence will come to a similar conclusion. But that even hides the fact that in any area of science you can't care to name anywhere, anything that is currently you know, considered the consensus view is up for debate and possibly being overturned at any time. And it happens regularly. There's no theory in science that doesn't get debated. And even among evolutionary biologists, there's constant debate over all sorts of issues. Um, so yeah, should we keep going? We're getting near the end here. Uh -huh. What does evidence tell us objectively? That's what I'm concerned with. And as far uh -huh. as I can tell, it does not point to a God. Arbiter of objectivity, tell us more. That's why I don't believe in him. And you need to be aware that quite frequently when scientists interpret the data, they're actually just interpreting the data based on their philosophical worldview. They've already decided it can't be God. Why? Because they ruled God out in advance. Or maybe it's because God did it. It's not a very testable hypothesis. What? <laughs> Where did he say that? He he accused, okay, I, I'm sorry, I want to jump in here because he accuses Frank Turek of sloganeering because, because Frank Turek goes around with his book and, and you know, he, he, he does all these stops in all these places. So naturally, he has a few slogans he kind of latches on to. But uh, uh, Heath here goes for the horriest old uh, atheist cliche, God did it. No, uh, there's no Christian apologetics argument that simply says God did it. That is simply uh, an atheist straw man. A very stupid, a very glib atheist straw man. Pretty much. I mean, you say there's no. I've met Christians who are like that. I, I don't think much of their reasoning skills. I, I think they help well, make yeah, it. That's not apologetics. I mean. Yeah, it's really not. It's just being stupid because God did it. Well, I'm sorry. And, and I also, actually, let me even back up. Saying because God did it is not a scientific explanation. I'm sorry. It can be. It just depends on which area of science you're looking at. Why is the universe here? You'll say. I don't know, or you'll make up three or four imp more implausible explanations. Uh, it's rational, on the other hand, because we have evidence all over the place that something intelligent is running things. And I don't mean created it in the beginning either. I mean is running things now and yeah. keeping it orderly and predictable and making science possible in the first place. All right. Okay, so, so he here, he refuses to engage actual apologetic arguments because he just characterizes them stupidly as God did it, and he just flat out lies about what Frank Turek is saying. And the evidence is here before us, and we can see clearly that he's lying about what Frank Turek says. So let's go on. Okay, I'm going to have to turn screen sharing back on here for a sec. Hang on. Here we go. 
or maybe it's because the explanations that we do find are always natural and don't point to any sort of a deity. Look, yeah. I see no indication. Wait, he just lied right there. No. I'm sorry, they don't seem to point to a deity? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. We got data all over science that points to a deity. Frank Turek shows it all the time, and you're not examining any of it. You're just making up generalizations and, and smearing Frank Turk. Yeah, right. well, well uh, it, it does the naturalistic explanations it finds are, are naturalistic. I mean, God is not a thing you can hold in your hands, so uh, it's not going to determine God's existence in the way it would determine something like that. No, just like you can't determine the existence of logic or mathematics or a whole bunch of other things. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Heath, you're incoherent. Now what I'm doing here Something is a like time that. check. How far have we gotten, guys? Oh, we're doing fine on time, only 34 minutes. Hey, guys, we could use your financial support for better streaming equipment. All right, let's, let's keep going and There's get a little more. There. I don't know, I'm confused. <laughs> sorry, what? That was Inception there. I saw myself. Okay, go on. Oh, yeah, I did that. All right, come on. Let's see if we can wrap him up. That there is a God. So I don't believe in him. However, you have already assumed that he exists, so you see him everywhere. Assumed? Oh, that's a very presumptuous comment. It is. In fact, I find that atheists are fond of, of claiming that, uh, that Christians or other religious presuppose a God. Well, yeah. the supposition that nothing intelligent is responsible for before or operating reality is a massive presupposition. People yeah. have looked for thousands of years without any Bible and concluded, oh, there has to be something, ra something intelligent behind all this, running everything. It has to be there. Not just Christians, of course, but that's... To presuppose there is no God is interesting because once you start presupposing there is no God, you draw very predictable paint-by-numbers conclusions, and if you look carefully and start getting skeptical, you'll notice that a lot of those conclusions are very shaky. Once you get skeptical of atheism, the jig is up, just so yeah, you know. Yeah, well, then you start getting into, into these weird ki kind of, uh, uh, kind of uh, bizarre beliefs like limitivist materialism, and you start getting into like Peter Singer ethics and stuff, if you really follow it where it leads. Yep, because ultimately what you're doing when you're, when you're in this philosophy, this ideology you've chosen for yourself and told yourself is not an ideology, is you have de you've declared that every man gets to determine for himself, or at least that you alone get to determine what's objective and what's not, what's true and what's not, what's science and what's not. You're putting yourself in the position of being judge of reality for everyone else. You came close there for a minute. You, met, you, you kind of acknowledged that maybe Frank has a valid point of view, but you really didn't because you're still pretending you're arbiter of truth and you're arbiter of, you know, you're judge of what is reality and not. Because he so, went to Sunday school and he rejected at 15 and now he's 19. And so he basically, he basically, he's basically seen both sides. He has yeah. an of knowledge of both sides of the argument. And he supposedly investigated other religions. Well, if he investigated the other religions with the sloppy slapdash and ridiculously stupid and childish way he examined Christianity, I'm not surprised he found the other religions unconvincing, too. Let me tell you something. Hinduism is infinitely more convincing to me than atheism is. And especially the ludicrous false claims about science you keep making. Yes. Okay. Let's see if we could get finished here soon. So the answer to the first question is, what does science say about God? Nothing. Because science doesn't say anything about anything. Scientists do. Science is just a method we use to discover cause and effect relationships. It doesn't say a thing. It's the scientists that say things. And you need to discover what their worldview is to discover how they're interpreting the evidence. Quite frequently, their worldview is interpreting the evidence. And they're not being fair with the evidence. It amazes me how you condemn science when you obviously... You liar! <laughs> oh disgusting liar Heath. You're a disgusting atheist liar and fraud. He did not make any such claim, you liar. Wait, Heath, I, 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 go ahead. No, I, I mean, what Frank Turek says here is such an essential part of just basic scientific literacy that yes, we have to know uh, uh, science is not this oracle that tells us things. Uh, and science, scientists have biases that, that, that inject themselves in, into what they report. And we have to be aware of this 
as scientific liter scientifically literate citizens. Now, you might have seen, uh, uh, Max, the, the video that I think like Lauren Southern had earlier today where she was like taking apart. Actually, this is a whole thing that Lauren Southern does is where she takes uh, little articles that says that science tells us. And of course, it's just completely ridiculous things. And now today she was taking apart a, a video that says science tells us uh, it, it's it's best not to have any children. Right. And so she, she kind of dissects these things. And yes, we're being lied to. We're being bullshitted. And so part of just being scientifically literate is being skeptical when you're told science tells you something. And what Frank Turek here, Frank Turek is actually putting forward a position of skepticism. You are, you, Heath, are putting uh, forward a position of just complete scientific credulousness and illiteracy that's exactly correct i i did see that lauren southern video i like her i imagine someone might say we can dismiss her because they don't like her politics but whatever she does a great job um here's the thing and you're falling into it heath is you speak of science as if it's a god and it has some sort of system assistant called objectivity that explains things to you um, and that nobody else understands science or objectivity. The fact is people make scientific claims all the time and many times they are bogus and nonsense, but they are based on science. Uh, yeah, I, I saw that one with Lauren Southern. Uh, this stupid article saying science proves it's better not to have kids and claims you'll be happier and live longer and everything will be better if you don't have kids. Uh, it's ludicrous pseudoscience and she immediately noticed that, but have you not noticed by now that in your atheistic uh, culture that you seem to like so much, people make claims about science all the time that they can't back up, Heath? Uh, well, <laughs> maybe you haven't because you make up claims about science you can't back up either. It's ridiculous. All right, shall we keep rolling? We hardly know anything about it at all. I mean, you said it yourself. Science is just a method that we use to find cause and effect relationships. But in the same breath, you say that it doesn't say anything at all. Does it tell us cause and effect or not? Because that's something that it tells us. Look, if science found something that God was the cause for, you'd be all over it. But we haven't found such a thing, so you just dismiss science altogether? How about, how about the universe itself? <laughs> how about that? I'm, I'm even done with his video at this point. My God, he... We're so near the end. We're so near the end. But he... No, Frank Turek did not dismiss science. Again, you're lying. Yep. I well, let's straight to the end, because, because we're, we're going to do this in an hour. So I, I vote that we just, we just go all the way through. Okay, we can go all the way through. But I mean, seriously, such blatant lies. You know, I, I, I long ago... On the Escaping Atheism Project, we came up with a phrase called Atheists Always Lie which really offended a lot of atheists and a lot of other people. But, dude, you're lying. And it's real easy to see how you're lying here. You're totally lying about what Turek said. You're lying about science. And you're lying to yourself, if, if not everybody else, that your atheistic worldview is objective and the default rational position among humans. And it, it, ugh. By the All way, right. uh, I, I think this is important to say. I I, I do think uh, uh, Frank Turek slipped up a little when he said yeah. that science tells us about cause and effect. And I, I think because he's speaking to a popular audience, he may not have made that that claim if he were talking to you know a, a, a somewhat more sophisticated audience. But yeah, science yeah. doesn't really tell us about cause and effect. It can only show us correlation. Yeah, and actually, a cause and effect is an inference. And again, that, that's subject to bias, too, but yes. Uh, in fact, science requires a, the, a faith that cause, cause and effect work. Yeah. Universe. And that cause, science it includes the unevidenced faith. Well, it has evidence, but it is an entirely faith-based, ultimately, view that cause and effect works. In fact, some people, including some scientists, have openly questioned whether or not cause and effect can work. Are, 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 are truly universal. David Hume thought that, that it was more of a delusion, mm -hmm. um, that we thought there was cause and effect. And it, 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 but in any case, sorry, science depends on the belief that cause and effect are real, which is not a scientific thing you can prove, actually. You can and prove that it the universe is intelligible, and that the universe works in a way that we can understand, and, the, and that the laws of nature are constant. 
yep, those are all presuppositions of the scientific worldview. And, and they're, 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 you know, they're pretty solid presuppositions. You can get things out of them, but that's all they are. And it's, it's logical to think cause and effect works. Therefore, it's logical to think science works. But yeah, you got a good point on cause and effect there. Okay, should we push on through? Look, it matters to me that science thus far has found nothing that is probably caused by a god Liar. as opposed to something else. But no, science is absolutely useless because if we did uh. find things out using science, then it would be inconvenient that we didn't find God. Oh, shut the fuck up. To be continued, to be very, very pointless. Do you, do you know? What, do you know? Like at the, at the end of like a really bad horror movie, and it says like the end. <laughs> it's like, oh, we don't want to. We don't want to see the continuation. That is the end. That's right. That's right. Hey, we have a fun, we have some fun people showing up in the chat room. I don't like the fact that that, that Google just erases the chat after we're done. So I always try and paste it afterwards. So you know, hi to uh, Ray Giordano, for example. Comments: Atheists never get corollary parables, figures of speech, generalizations, etc. Yep. And th this kid needs to take some science courses. Actually, I'm not sure he does because Frank Turek has a very good point here. You know, Ray Giordano says that, 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 that Heath here needs some science courses, but in fact, an awful lot of scientists are gro science teachers are grossly irresponsible. I've talked to many young people in their teens and 20s who've experienced that, science teachers making ludicrous claims they can't possibly back up. You know, science teachers doing that. Uh, hey, science schools, yes. Yes, uh, science teachers flat out getting things wrong in class and refusing to admit it. Uh, scientists bully science teachers I mean bullying students um, all of that happens um, with their presuppositional atheism and just and, and because many again not a majority but many have this ideological idea to that to be scientist is to be atheist mm -hmm. and that is total nonsense on multiple scores including the fact that atheist scientists are in fact a minority of scientists they're also very much a minority of Nobel Prize winning scientists, by the way. Most Nobel Prize winning scientists today are Christians. 65% of, of Nobel laureates in physics are Christians. And, and uh, what, like my favorite thing about the uh, Elaine Howard Eklund is that she actually found in Hong Kong, religious believers are actually more prevalent among uh, scientists than among the general population. That's correct. In, in the Chinese system, the, the government is officially atheist. Atheism uh, and all the same presuppositions about the universe that Heath runs on are, are taught in the schools. Yet it turns out a majority of Chinese scientists are dissenters from atheism. And I think that's because when you study science enough, which you haven't done much of, Heath, you start to realize that an atheistic universe is pretty hard to sustain. And you wind up stuck with pseudoscientist fools like Lawrence Krauss trying to tell you otherwise, just making things up. I, I love what atheist numbnuts who completely founder through their uh, science classes in high school uh, t talk about like we when they're talking about scientists. It's like, <laughs> yeah, because I, I can I can paste uh, invisible sky fairy memes. Uh, I can count myself among the scientists. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, uh, let's let's see your uh, report cards from high school and see how well you did in, in science class. Yeah, and even then, science class, man, it just meant you memorized, wrote facts pretty yeah. well. That's that's my biggest problem with science class today. Most places, they don't teach you to think scientifically at all. They give you a bunch of facts to memorize and a few standardized experiments that you know, don't really go anywhere because they've been done for thousands of years. Um, and they tell you that's science. And no, they, science is a method for exploring the universe. And by the way, increasingly, Heath, it's also a method for exploring the supernatural, which we have abundant scientific evidence exists. The supernatural, I mean. So what... Uh, I think since, since I've always loved science, and I've known many, many scientists, including many atheist scientists, non-religious scientists, uh, scientists who were religion, I've known tons of scientists, and it offends me that ideological atheists talk as if they own science, 
and science gives them all their answers, and it's a lie in both cases. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you don't own science, you didn't invent science, you're not particularly better at science, and there's no science in anything you're saying here in this video of yours, by the way. No, that, that, that's something I always, I always say, they, they value science so much, and, and they always use uh, uh, these self-congratulatory terms, they call themselves signed, uh, scientific and logical and rational, but you will not find any science in what they say. You will not find any fact in what they say. What you will find is this completely self-serving rhetorical blather. About, maybe they use the word science. Maybe they use the word logic, but there's no science or logic or fact in anything they say. Ray Giordano in the comments adds, and I'll love, leave this as the closing thought. Ray Giordano says, biochem and thermodynamics proved God to me. So I wouldn't have added any other way. Yeah, Ray, you would be one of a number of people I've talked to who discovered that there had to be a God while they were thinking for themselves and studying science. And, and Ray goes on here to say, I was also in my 20s, so not as swayed by teachers' opinions. Yeah, one of the things I keep finding about the average atheist today is they are very gullible and ever, very, very easy to sway toward any position as long as you can convince them that the position is scientific. Whether it's actually scientific or not is, is up for debate, but I find the average atheist can be led around by the nose and just by telling him something is science and proving to him, you know, oh, look, there's peer-reviewed papers saying this. This must be true. Atheists will even say dumb things like, we must accept the, 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 the findings of science, as if science is this oracle we go to, this, this, this big god that we pray to that will give us our answers. In fact, did you see this, this summer? There was this big uh, rally in defense of science, supposedly. Yes. <laughs> and they were all running around literally worshiping an image of, of science, and it's like, wow you guys really do worship science. And when you worship science, that means you don't understand it. And you yes. don't understand science, Heath. You clearly do not. You're just making up lies about science. And it's really pretty contemptuous. Um, can't think of much, much, more, much more I would add. Do you have any closing thoughts for us, Rob? No, I think that's, that's a good way to end the discussion. By the way, I, I just want to apologize when I when I had my little uh, chat uh, with you and and with Chris Lansdowne. Uh, I never checked up on my comments, and I apologize to everyone who may have left uh, some comments that I never read. All right, everybody. So th there you go. Listen, everybody. There's nothing. I really. Well, we do often make fun of atheists. It's true. There's nothing wrong with being confused and not sure what you believe. Um, but when you are listening to an atheist like Heath, please get some skepticism toward him. He makes claims he cannot back up. He grossly distorts and strawmans his opponents. Uh, I mean, literally, it's kind of infuriating that he just, that he sits here suggests that Frank Turek says science is useless. He never said a thing like that, you little weasel. Yeah. <laughs> He said, ultimately, still, all science can do is bring us evidence. We, in the end, still have to interpret the evidence. And I'm sorry, but a lot of us have looked at the evidence and concluded there has to be a God. The only point I'll give you is that most of that evidence can prove more than one idea of God. But I'm sorry, there's overwhelming evidence in science that there's a God. And it's, perfectly, it's a perfectly rational inference to draw. You'll have to get used to it. You, sir, and your worldview are unconvincing. All right, everybody, give me a like. Give us, please remember to give us both a like, a subscribe. We do need your financial support, too, seriously. Uh, we've got a lot coming up this week. John C. Wright has rescheduled, and so I'm looking forward to talking to him sometime this week. Uh, maybe tomorrow, maybe not. We're still talking about it. We've got other videos planned. Please also make sure to subscribe not just to the Max Kolbe channel. The Max Kolbe channel is where we do most escaping atheism content right now. But please also subscribe and like to Rob's Deflating Atheism channel. Hey. All right. God bless, everybody. God bless.